All right, so what is up, everybody? It's me, Troy, and I'm back here with another video. If you are new here, then you know my name is Troy, okay? Peace, peace, peace. Thanks, everybody, who recently commented, liked, and subscribed. I thank you guys so much for hanging around with me and my craziness. Uh, with that being said, you know, I don't think people really watch me like that. So, you know, I try. thanks for being patient also if you're waiting on a video from me. So, anyway, Book Outlet is now doing free shipping. I don't know how long this will last, but I hope it's permanent. I believe it's permanent at this point, but Book Outlet is doing free shipping for orders that are $35 or more. I decided to take advantage of this sale. You know, girl, they know how to pull me in, okay? They know how to pull me and my wallet in. And um, I got six books that I'm going to share with you guys here today and then plus one from a whole different place so the first book that I ended up getting from the book outlet was my year of meats by Ruth Ozeki Ozeki uh, I think this was published in 1998 anyway it was in the late 90s but that aside you know I think the most popular book by Ruth Ozeki that was orbiting around booktube and YouTube maybe about three or four years ago was um, her novel A Tale for the Time Being um, I read that in September 2013 and I always kept it in the back of my mind that I was gonna go back and read this book by the same author eventually luckily for me I was just browsing through book outlet and they had this on sale I think it, I probably paid about 529 or so for this book but yes Ruth Ozeki's uh, My Year of Meats. So the next book that I got from Book Outlet was, I gotta get this out of the way, but Go Tell It on the Mountain by James Baldwin. So this will be my second James Baldwin reading, so please don't judge me, girl. I ain't got time to be judged right now, okay? You know, I just read whatever the hell I want to, but I ain't got time to be judged. Okay, and nonetheless, um, I did read Giovanni's Room at the beginning of this month, which is May at this point in this video. Hopefully, if it goes up on time, but I did read Giovanni's Room uh, at the early part of this month. I gave that book probably about four stars. So, without a doubt, you know, James Baldwin's writing is, you know, is everything. You know, that's going to be the immediate hook that drew me in and kept carrying me throughout the story but despite that I think the thing that really kind of put a wall between me and that novel in itself is the fact that I really didn't I really wasn't identifying with any of the characters within the book um, but I think that Go Tellin' on the Mountain is going to be a totally different story a totally different you know pace for someone like me and what I mean by that comparably speaking is that you know Giovanni's Room took place in Paris um, and Go Till It on a Mountain takes place in Harlem, New York. And I think, and I want to go ahead and say this too, but even from an ethnical property standpoint, I feel like that I'll be able to identify a lot more with the material that's going to, or the characters that are going to take place in Go Till It on the Mountain. So that is on my list. I know a lot of you guys have read this book and don't spoil it for me. The next book that I got from the book outlet was Starting From Scratch, A Different Kind of Writer's Manual by Rita Mae Brown. As you guys know, I love Rita Mae Brown. It's Specifically her uh, Miss Murphy uh, Cozy Mystery series, um, you know, here's the thing with Rena Mae Brown, you know, before she started writing mysteries, she was writing a lot of contemporary LGBTQ um, novels, and you know, that's kind of what she, one of her like mainstays as a writer is that she really talks about a lot of those issues as well as other political issues and give her commentary within her writing. So with that being said, I absolutely love the cozy mysteries that she writes, although I need to go back and read her LGBTQ contemporary fiction as well, so don't judge me. But I really love her cozy writing because I've always described her writing or her way with words and passages to have this like creamy effect. That's always been the term that I use. So with this being like, I would say Rita Mae Brown's version of Stephen King's on writing. Um, I am excited to know what was what is her writing process. You know what kind of techniques do she employ to tell her specific stories. And you know the thing in general is that I love Rita Mae Brown, considering the fact that she has been an LGBTQ activist her entire life. You know I just really have an interest on the damn woman. You know what I'm saying. And that aside, I and I may have mentioned this before, but I love. Well, I'm attracted to people who I can learn things from, and she's definitely one of those type of people that I feel like I can learn something from. So, scratch, starting from scratch, I just going to read it backwards. Starting from scratch, A Different Kind of Writer's Manual by Rita Mae Brown. Okay, so the next three books are part of a series by, I hope I say her name right, you know I'm Alabama and all the way. Alabama, we double negative, swallowed words, speak too fast, so, and sometimes too thick. But the author's name is Susan, Suzanne Aruda. Anyway, she writes the J. Dale Cameron series. I read the first book, which is called Mark of the Lion, probably in the later part of 2014. I can't remember the specific reasons why it took me from that point to this point to finally like order and pick up the second book. But 
um, I'll look back in my blog post and put a link below that will describe whatever I was going through at that time. Nonetheless, before I share the books, I want to go ahead and get into the three bullet points as to why I decided to pick up this, or why I was drawn to this series in the first place. Besides the fact that the main protagonist is a woman and the books are told in the third person, she's also a photojournalist. The books take place in Africa and there's one very much more intriguing factor added to this, and which is that the books take place in the 1920s. So, with that being said, I read Mark of the Lion and I ordered three books from Book Outlet. The second book is Stalking Ivory. Here is Miss Jade. Oh, where's she a girl? Here go Miss Jade. Got her little strap right here. Got a probably got a gun or some kind of revolver set. Girl, I'm backwards. Anyway, African jungle, African setting. I love that theme. And here's some elephants, so don't shoot the elephant. Uh, the third book in the series is The Serpent's Daughter. And here she is also again with the lion. And she has like a little, I like this little indigenous looking um, blade or machete or whatever she has in there right there. But anyway, that's the fourth, third book. And then the fourth book in the series is The Leopard's Prey. And this cover look a little bit more ghetto and digitalized, like us pixelated or something. Nonetheless, Girl, I hope it serves. Anyway, I went on ahead and racked up those three books. So I have book one, two, three, four. <sighs> Hopefully, I can get into these books. Now, y'all know how I am, girl. I don't do all that. You know how that, that what is it, that, that placating and, and pontificating, I just want to use that word, <laughs> on BookTube or YouTube in general, where you, where you know you don't like a book and you have to be nice. You know that, you feel like Vincent just working for me? Now you know that ain't me. So if I got to cut this series, You'll be the first to know. I'm just saying, you know, you know how I get down. So the last book that I'm going to share with you guys that I got, which it was from a different place altogether, is the Victorian Mysteries, the Miss Jeffries Victorian Mysteries right here. And this is actually a three book uh, collection here. So the, it's had, it contains the first three books in the Miss Jeffries series. You know, Miss Jeffries is like a one of those old English maids or what or whatever from a specific time period. I don't know the complete details. This book, this series has just always been sort of in my peripheral vision. And um, I found this collection of three of the first books and I was like, you know what? It's time to go ahead and it's high time for tea. And so that is all guys. Thank you guys so much for joining with me today. If you read any of these books, then please drop me a comment down below saying if you yay or nay, if you liked it or not or whatever. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Like I gotta, gotta, gotta keep it moving here. So peace.